This is extremely absurd and could indicate that the entire Ripple SEC case means absolutely nothing. Ripple is going to be okay no matter what, and XRP is going to be fine no matter what. I may have just made my most significant discovery in this row, the SEC case. The real intent of this litigation was to dislodge retail holders. Before you conclude that this is simply a huge conspiracy theory, guys, I urge you to watch the entire film because what I'm about to show you is utterly intriguing. Guys, I'm not a lawyer, but I have talked to a lot of people about this, so I believe that what I'm showing you has some element of reality, and even if it doesn't, it is entirely true. If you grasp what I'm saying, it will completely change the course of this case. Guys, it truly does demonstrate that the case had nothing to do with preventing Ripple from shutting down XRP in the US, that was not the original objective in the slightest. You are going to be blown away when I explain to you guys what the case's intended goal was. And I have no doubt that the SEC is fully aware of this. So, folks, let's start out by discussing some presumptions. What are some of the current opinions regarding the worst case scenario in this case? We are aware that many people believe that Ripple will have to leave the US if they lose. XRP won't be able to be sold in the US if Ripple loses. If Ripple fails, XRP will become an E, a legal security, and many nations may even decide to declare it an illegal security. So, folks, let's dissect some of that information and discuss what will actually occur. Guys, let me start by stating that XRP is not currently a legal security. Currently, it has no status, nobody knows if it is a commodity. Nobody is certain if it is a security, but the court will make that determination. What happens if the court determines it to be a security, guys? Guys, it's still not a legally binding security. Unregistered security is what it is. What does that imply then? This indicates that the SEC has not received Ripple's XRP registration. What, guys? There are many securities traded in the US that are not SEC registered, thus they are not required to. What does that imply then? In our worst case scenario, XRP is now classified as a security. It's not against the law, but it isn't registered with the SEC guys. The SEC website will clearly state who is permitted to trade in unregistered securities if you visit it. Then, things really start to become interesting. I'm going to begin reading my tweet straight away in an effort to bring the discussion back to its original topic. However, I noted in a tweet that XRP itself is a security and would have to be an unregistered security even if the SEC prevails in this case. This is because it is simply impossible to register a cryptocurrency with the SEC at this time. In this case, the SEC prevails. An unregistered security is XRP. We are now in such situation. In that case, only US retail investors will be impacted, you guys. Why then only us? Well, every nation in the globe has its own set of laws. Therefore, we are exclusively discussing the USA here. As a result, Retail investors everywhere will still be able to utilize XRP as of right now. If XRP is determined to be an unregistered security, only retail investors will be harmed, not institutions or accredited investors. Well, folks, the truth is that institutions and accredited investors are permitted to transact in unregistered securities. View this, please. This information is taken directly from the SEC website and includes a bank, a broker dealer that is registered with the SEC a state-established and maintained employee benefit program, and a tax-exempt charity organization. A director of a company, a person whose individual or joint net worth exceeds $1 million, and a person whose annual income exceeds $200,000. A trust with assets over $5 million, a sort of business not usually eligible for credit that has investments over $5 million, and so forth. It doesn't stop. What's the point, though? If the SEC loses this case, all of these individuals are permitted to trade in unregistered securities, which includes XRP. What does that imply then? Guys, this area is on its way. This death scenario for XRP in the United States is wholly inaccurate for Ripple in the country. Even if XRP were an unregistered security in the US, banks, broker-dealers, individuals, governments, states, and all these other organizations could still use it. Retail holders who are not accredited are the only ones who lose out in this situation. They are the only ones that require the SDC's protection in order to transact in securities, and doing so would make XRP a registered security. However, Ripple will never have any motivation to register XRP and in a moment, we'll discuss why that is the case. But as I mentioned at the outset, only retail investors will be affected, so I want to make that clear. 
Ripple will also experience some minor effects. They will no longer be able to trade retail liquidity in the US. And given that they allowed XRP to enter the secondary market, which in the worst case scenario would seemingly be illegal, they will probably have to pay a fine. But that does not make XRP a security that is illegal. It's simply not registered. And as we said, many different individuals are able to use an unregistered security and do so in accordance with its entire scope of intended use. Guys, the main topic that has to be addressed right now is whether or not this case has a smaller impact than many people believe. Does it solely affect US investors who are not accredited? Guys, if that's the case, the entire Ripple SEC lawsuit is a gigantic non-event. Yes, it would be terrible if it meant that XRP was illegal for regular investors to use. Do you people know what a VPN is? They would attempt to scare retail out of the asset before the big boys could use it, which is impossible to enforce without causing a major shakeout. And guys, I just want to give you a great example that JV brought up right here because it's important and clearly demonstrates that this may be the case. In response to my efforts to learn more about what is happening, he tweeted out. Because of how this first occurred to me, my memory of it is somewhat distorted. However, he claimed to be inquiring as to if they could still utilize it, that is, trade XRP, among themselves. Between those investors and the recognized institutions, he means. And wouldn't that just exclude retail from the mix and go on to argue that the JP Morgan coin is only used by institutions, kind of as we're hinting at what might happen with XRP not authorized for retail and seems to be meeting JP Morgan's purposes. I don't see why Ripple couldn't accomplish the same thing because banks are already their primary target. This is spot on, fellas. The same is being done by JP Morgan. They are conducting business between institutions using their token, much to what would happen if XRP were to be recognized as a registered security. Guys, I still firmly believe that Ripple will prevail in this issue, and nothing has changed. Additionally, I don't believe that XRP is an unregistered security. The worst case scenario in this situation isn't so horrible, as I wish to demonstrate. Ripple would be acceptable if it only impacts retail investors. XRP is acceptable. Additionally, US retail investors could purchase a VPN. So what about this situation wouldn't be so horrible? Because of this, I tweeted that this lawsuit might turn out to be a huge nothing burger. All that would happen is that some weak hands who are now afraid to own XRP would dump it, and they would then get gobbled up by the institutions that could now transact in it. And since this relates to the entire affair, guys, I wanted to show you something. And in response to what I'm discussing here, you're going to see this a lot. This burger employee tweeted something. The reporting part is the issue. Then, Ripple would have to announce upcoming sales weeks in advance. If they have to declare sales weeks in advance, OTL won't function. And gentlemen, here is the big realization. That wouldn't be the case since XRP wouldn't be registered with the SEC, and accredited investors may merely utilize it without reporting to any institutions. Retail investors would simply be barred from the market since XRP would never be recognized by Ripple. It would be absurd because it would ruin the O'Deal offering and XRP's fast transaction functionality. Since they can still use XRP as an unregistered security and conduct transactions any way they choose, neither Ripple's nor the institutions using it are going to register it prior to every transaction. I hope that made sense. And I certainly hope that wasn't going on too much. However, the key argument I'm attempting to make is whether or not XRP will actually suffer if the SEC's case is successful. As long as they had a VPN, it appears to me that businesses would still be able to use it, including banks and retail establishments. But since I'm not a lawyer, as I mentioned, it only seems fair that I point forth one opposing viewpoint before I end this movie. I'm not sure if I had some false assumptions in this situation. And I believe it's crucial to demonstrate this to you so you won't simply accept this. Since I'm not a lawyer, assume that everything I say here is true. I might not be sure, I might have made a significant error. In response, Jesse Heim stated that it would be necessary to establish that XRP was not fraudulently offered as a security. According to him, if it's found that XRP was marketed as a security against the law, it wouldn't matter if it wasn't registered, neither would institutions be able to handle it, making it effectively impenetrable. Guys, I hope this helps put what I said into perspective. Much of what I mentioned was based on the supposition that it was an unregistered security rather than an unlawful security. Clearly, securities regulations are extremely complicated. Just wanted to make this clear. But if it's not against the law, I think the remainder of what I stated makes sense, people. 
I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe.